Okay, we're speaking with Leo Fung. Yeah, I'm playing a, a Japanese Interpol agent. And uh, by the name of uh, Sho Tanaka, and he's a martial artist. And, uh, and so together with uh, Master Ogami, we are in the same organization. And uh, we're looking for uh, Yen, who's played by James Takeda, uh, who's promoting these illegal uh, human uh, cockfights. Right. <laughs> so how, how do you like your role? I like it. It's a little different from what I usually do. Yeah. I usually just play a cop or, you know, something like that and just lay <laughs> back. You got you pegged as a cop. Right? Yeah, yeah. Lay back and that's it, you know. But this is, uh, you know, even though it's an international cop, but the role is different. It's uh, the interaction between uh, uh, Rev Brown and myself and, and Master uh, Ogami or, or, or Master Sakamukai. Right. Uh, it's kind of interesting. He doesn't say a word through the whole movie, just smile and then show his stuff with his Joe. Yeah. And then at the end, uh, uh, Reb says, uh, does he ever talk? I said, yeah, sure, he knows how to talk. And, and then he speaks out and says, well, there's nothing to say. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, that's the, and then I, you know, I uh, did most of the lines in there. And, uh, and then I did one fight scene, and then I had this dojo scene. And that's about it. I Usually I do all the fight scenes in, my, in these other little low-budget movies I do. Okay, well, how, how, when was the first film that you did? I did the first film in uh, 1974 in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. What was it called? It's called uh, uh, Manila Go, and they changed it here when they released it in the theaters, uh, Murder in the Orient. And uh, I, I started with uh, another martial artist, uh, Ron Marquini, mm -hmm. and he's doing a lot of uh, uh, stuff, too, uh, overseas. So what is your perspective now on the martial arts? Well, I mean, of course, back in the early 70s, it was just martial arts, martial arts. Martial That's arts. right. And, and, then it, and it was in this, uh, you know, embrotic uh, 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 stage, I mean, in the infancy stage, you know. Uh, now it's, it's just, uh, my opinion is uh, uh, it has gotten popular. Everybody knows about it. And so they're using it uh, in the movies, and they know that it's commercial because so many people practice martial arts. It seems almost like the seeds were planted in the 70s, and yeah. then it took a while for, this, for it to That's harvest. Right. And yeah, yeah, it, and it, yeah, it's, uh, especially the movie part. Yeah. But the, uh, the American version of the karate started back in the 60s because I, uh, when, when I first uh, met Bruce, I'd been in it five years, and uh, I was promoting a karate tournament. I was one of the first one that did tournaments up in Northern California. Oh, really? and, uh, and Ed Parker did the first international. And then I did a bunch of little, little small tournaments up in Northern California. In fact, Chuck Norris came to a couple of them that I did, and he won. And, and there was, looking back, I, I remember all the names were in those tournaments. And now, this, you know, some of them were or big stars. Yeah, you know? no kidding. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And what was your what was your style of, of kung fu that you studied? Well, I studied Choi Lei Fat kung fu oh, and, and, and still um and then uh, then when I ran into Bruce, and my background is uh, is in boxing. I when I was in college, I fought uh, Golden Gloves and. Oh, Bruce would loved you then. Oh yeah, well that's how uh, we. That's right. He told me, hey man, he said uh, this actor. He said, man, don't go over there and, and spend your money perfecting a bunch of classical mess. <laughs> 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 he said, what you got. It is is uh, is very effective. I said I don't know. You know, he said, and then so he tried. He he did convince me later. I realized, uh, you know, his the truth of his his uh, statement. Uh, the guy was real perceptive. You know, uh, because most of the gong fu uh, uh, that I trained at that time, where the master would sit and smoke, and he'd just get up and show you a few movements, and then you perfect it. Next week, you come back and give some more, and soon you know a whole form. You know, right? Well, in in the early '60s. Uh, uh, Everything was more secret. Even Ed Parker didn't have any forms in his system. They used to go to the um, Chinese New Year's Festival and take a, a camera, a Super 8 camera, and shoot all the demonstrations. And they came back and developed their own uh, 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 forms or katas. And then they named them this, 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 you know. Uh, Tracy's whole system is that. Was based on that. Based on, if you watch it, you see it's kind of like, uh, like Top Suit. It goes on for 200 movements. <laughs> but what it is, they took a little here and a little there and put it in and called it, gave it a name. So it wasn't like the Japanese form, where it's traditional, you know, you got the peons and, and, and on and on and, 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 uh, and different associations have different forms, but a different version of that. And so, uh, uh, so that, that was the, the, the era when, uh, when I, I started, you know. Back then, yeah. Yeah, back then. Well, you were saying, too, with, that you studied with Bruce for a while or yeah. just worked out with him for quite yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. I studied with him because uh, the guy had, you see, um, I, I studied with him for a whole year in a class situation. 
Oh, in L.A.? At the uh, no, in, uh, in uh, Oakland. Oh, with yes, James it was Lee. James Lee. George Lee oh, and all those Yeah, guys. all those guys. And I was in that class. There was about ten of us. And, and it was different because he would lecture most of the time, and then he would just do, like, uh, he said, bridging the gap. And at that time, I didn't, uh, you know, he, he was so uh, uh, intellectual about things that he had a label for everything. And then, like when he did the five ways of, uh, uh, of attacking somebody, he would say A, B, C, and blah, 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 you know. So anyway, uh, we spent whole uh, weeks and weeks on, on he just come in and close the gap. And, and never really sit down and explain to what it was, but afterward he gave you a lecture. And then, and then years later I realized, well, wait a minute, that's what it is, it's all mental stuff, because uh, why he closed the gap on you and, and, and you slow on your reflexes is because he can read you before you even uh, start. I heard his, his closing speed was phenomenal. Oh, man. Because he had us stand there like this, and he'd come down the line, be 10 to 12 of us. And, 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 and he, he'll say, okay, now no, you try to block. Boom, he's in there, and it, you know, he's in and out. Or either, you know, you're just a little bit too late or too soon. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Must have been something to have trained with him. Oh, yeah, and then I spied with him over here in Culver City, I think, when he was living over there. And uh, God, it, it was nothing. He just, I said, no, 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 hit me with that sidekick. I said, well, I, I, he said, oh, okay, man, I saw. And, and I just kind of tapped. He, he did it half speed, and I, I caught it a little bit, you know. But then he wanted me to come and attack him. Well, it just, he wasn't there. Really? Because he, he, he ran miles and miles backwards and sideways. That was part the, of his running? He used to do yeah, that? Yeah, he'd run backwards and sideways, you know. And that's how, you know, uh, for footwork. Because he studied Muhammad Ali, and he says, you know, the secret of it is uh, footwork. Yeah. That's fast. Yeah. Yeah. So like, then he told me, he says, two things remember if you want to be a good fighter. He says, stay alive and stay alert. <laughs> See, he, he all philosophizing was all mostly conceptual stuff. And unless you, you're really yeah. in tune with it, uh, uh, you really don't um, don't know what he's talking about, and you're gonna continue to, uh, as he says, uh, patternize training. Right. Yeah. He, he said everybody. He said. He said, man, I said, I said it, it don't make sense. He said he used to sit there and, and talk, you know, in his in his accent, you know, yeah. and and he says, you get a fat guy, a skinny guy, and a little guy, and you're gonna teach him to, to do the same way. So it's a bunch of like a bunch of ten soldiers, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so he said, "You're perfecting, you know, uh, uh, just a patternized mess, or he called it classical mess." You know? oh, <laughs> so how, how long did you train with him for? I trained uh, when he was in Oakland. I trained a year, and then I used to write to him and talk to him on telephone once a week. And then uh, I, I, I uh, back in '67, I think uh, Linda called me and said, "Well, we have a birthday party for Bruce, a surprise party." So, so I went down and we stayed. I stayed in his house, and, all, and he had about half a dozen martial artists there, and they stayed all night and, and didn't sleep. You know, because oh, Bruce sat there in the kitchen, talk and talk and talk, and he would imitate Bruce. Uh, uh, he would imitate Ed Parker and oh, all he did. Was yeah, he good impersonating? Uh, uh, yeah, he was good imitating <laughs> different, different people. I mean, imitating how they they do. You know, Ed Parker used to go pop, 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 you know. And so Bruce would get there and say, "Okay, man, well, let me show you now. I'm Ed Parker." <laughs> He was comical. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What a character. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. like I told Shannon, you know, uh, I had never seen her since uh, she was one year old, you see. So I told Shannon, I said, you know, you don't know you don't know me, but I know your father. I said, I was over at your house when your father bought a new rug with, a, I think it was a tiger's head or bear head or whatever. And he was explaining to me, and then Shannon came into the room. Oh, really? She just waddled in, you know, <laughs> still in diapers, you know. Oh, man. <laughs> and so that was a long time ago. That's great. How would you how would you assess Bruce in terms of, uh, you know, his as martial artists go in the uh, 20th century? Where would you rate him? I would say he's, uh, you know, uh, ahead of his time. Yeah. Even if he was here today, he still would be ahead of his time. Yeah. Because the guy, uh, he had the intellectual ability that... 99% of martial artists didn't have. Yeah. And most of it uh, operated on a physical level. And, and I, I call it uh, not only mental, but spiritual level. Yeah. You see. What was, uh, I was speaking with George Lee this past week, and he told me that Bruce used to do one arm chin ups. He said he'd do like 50 of them. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, there's nothing that guy couldn't do because, you know, he uh, he believed in, the, in, the, in possibility thinking. You know, he said, if you. Because uh, I, I remember, and he's very intense and passionate mm -hmm. with his. Uh, uh, you know, with his training. Because I remember one time I was at Black Belt and I did a book on Chole fight and he helped me, uh, you know, do the research on the, on the history of it. 
and he was hanging around out there, and because uh, he was going to introduce me to Mido with Black Belt. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he said, hey, hey Leo, I want to uh, show you something. He said, hold, hold my hand here. So he wanted to do an uh, arm wrestle like that, you see. And, and I was uh, pretty strong, too. So uh, what happened was he tried to turn my hand like that, and it was, you know, he couldn't do it. That bugged him. <laughs> so he went back and did a lot of that stuff. So he came back about three or four weeks later. He said, Leo, let's try that again. Man, he almost broke my arm. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Well, George said once he got focused, he said he developed oh. a washboard on him in six weeks. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what he was. I mean, he, he's got such a big ego. You know, you don't, uh, you know, you don't get ahead of him in anything. Really, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but it was good. I held him. That was, uh, I think that was uh, what made uh, Bruce tick. Yeah. Was uh, that passion for whatever he did. What was the most impressive, I guess, feat of uh, physical feat you saw Bruce do? Well, uh, what I was most impressed with was the fact that, because I see people lift uh, three or 400 pounds of bench presses or something like that, the most impressive is, is Bruce's uh, tremendous timing and, and, and sense of distance mm -hmm. in fighting. That's, and, 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 uh, and he can read an opponent. That's, really? that's what impressed me. It's like he was psychic. He could anticipate oh, it. Oh, yeah. It was amazing. And then, then and he was so, uh, you know, brilliant mentally that uh, he can take anything you show him and, and make it 400% better. No kidding, yeah, yeah, just by analyzing it. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, you see, I studied Kung Fu and all that, it was all it was forms. No, no. So uh, Mido, his friend, uh, at Rango asked me to write a book on uh, Silom and Choi Lei Fai. Mm -hmm. So I said to uh, Bruce, I said, Bruce, I don't know what these things are for. You know, the, the instructor, I don't know if he knows it either, but... Uh, but he claims he's a secret. So he just, you just do the form, and later he'll reveal what the secret is. Yeah. Bruce said that's bullshit. Yeah. So, so he said, "Here." He, uh, so I spent. He spent almost six hours with me breaking down one of the forms. No kidding. Yeah. And I said, "Man, that makes sense." And he said, "I don't know if they had that in mind or not, but it's better than what they did." <laughs> <laughs> so, so hey, I had it on Super Eight, and and uh, and what happened was I gave the copy, master copy of the lab in Fresno, and they went out of business. I couldn't find it. Because he showed it to Joe Lewis. Oh yeah. At that time, at that stage in time, and Joe Lewis said, "Hey, come on, I'll show you something. This is modern Kung Fu, man." And and, and uh, he didn't tell uh, 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 Joe that he had broke it down. You see, <laughs> and, and Bruce, uh, I mean, Joe was impressed. He said, "Wow." He said, "Isn't that?" Because I was doing the form, and then then went into the breakdowns. Yeah. And just like Bruce told me, see, they had a, stuff like that, you know, and, and you know, and so he he just shortened it what he did. And he, and he said, well, that's what it is. You just grab a guy's arm and bam, you know. And, and, and so uh, Bruce is, uh, had a tremendous mind, you know. He could take anything and turn it into a martial arts. Uh, Do you ever uh, recall him doing much in, uh, weight training when he was doing that? Yeah, he'd doing a lot of heavy, uh, I mean, a lot of uh, high repetition. Was he? Yeah. What, was, what sort of exercises did he, he do? He would do, well, squats, and then he would do Curls, uh, presses, presses, and then he'd do good mornings uh, like that. That's how he wrecked his back. He was putting 95 pounds <laughs> and did good morning and it popped a, a, a disc in his back or something. Wow. That's why he's laid up for it. Because he was, he was doing that at a time when most fighters, particularly yeah. boxers and martial artists, thought weight training would slow you down. Yeah, yeah. Like ruin yeah. You. No, no, no. He, he did 25 reps in three or four sets. You know? Really? Yeah. He burned you out. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you know, you, you know, you're familiar with weight training. You yeah. know, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then uh, and he would break it up. He was very organized. He break up. He said, uh, so he "Said maybe Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't know what day it is, but he, he'd do glove practice. He'd hang a glove up and, wow, you know, and, and he'd go on and do that. And another time, he'd do thousand, a thousand punches on a, on on that uh, bean bag. You know, he put on the wall. Yeah. That's why he has uh, his right knuckles is like that. These two knuckles, you know, sticking up. And then he would do, you know, BB shots and uh, with a glove on, so he wouldn't mess up his uh, his fingers." You know. And just and to strengthen him up. Yeah, he put the gloves on. He just boom, you know, bam, you know. I mean, he'd do them thousands of repetitions. Well, Wally J was telling me too. He yeah. saw Bruce put that 300-pound bag almost up to the ceiling. With oh the yeah, sidekick. oh yeah, yeah. That's, I don't dare to hold that sidekick. You know, hold anything for that sidekick. Yeah, Hayward said. Actually, Hayward Nishioka yeah, told me that yeah. Bruce had the highest, uh, the hardest side, sidekick he ever experienced. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm glad to share that because I uh, have not. You know, done much. Uh, you know, a lot of people have uh, taken advantage of Bruce. Mm -hmm. Even uh, people don't know him, but, but I have never taken advantage of that. But you'd also have very valuable insight because you're one of the few people from yeah. Oakland. I yeah. mean, and that yeah. was a very yeah. developmental period. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because I remember 
there was ten guys there, and one guy there was training with uh, Jimmy, and suddenly he realized, he said, you, he said, what kind of training you did? I said, no, I just had Western boxing. See, because at the time, the, the Bai Chong was like that. Yeah. And then pretty soon, you know, Jit Kim Do was like that. Yeah, See, and here, I, I, uh, I started out, at first it was like that, and then I said, well, okay, I'll do it this way. Yeah, yeah. So Bruce loved boxing. Oh, he so loved he boxing. Yeah. He, when I was over there, and he was looking at Muhammad Ali or, with a mirror backwards, you know, so he would be a southpaw. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> But he, he had every Muhammad Ali Super 8 uh, film, 8mm uh, Super 8 uh, that was available. No kidding. He, liked I mean, he, he, had a, he had a following draw and he pulled it out. Because yeah, I was collecting them too, but he had more than I had. Really? He was also a Dempsey fan too, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was all those guys. Yeah, because uh, Dempsey, Bob and Weave, and, uh, he would watch uh, all the different styles and then he would pick out things that... So that's he why he was so advanced. Really analytical. Yeah, yeah, yeah analytical. And that's why he was so advanced. He was a step ahead of everybody. And uh, you know those, uh, those. I still got the cards, uh, the business cards. Uh, I think I got a couple of them. No kidding. And, uh, they put it on auction. It was sold for a thousand dollars. Oh man. Yeah, I know. I still, I still got crazy. a couple of those. And and then I, I have uh, about four or five letters he sent me. Oh, well, that's left. great. Yeah, yeah. So what's what's next for you? What are you going to do next? Well, uh, uh, I'm working on a, uh, a comic book. Uh, you know. Uh, this is the first time I work with somebody. I have my own production company and do these low budget stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm working on a thing called Bazooka Band, and it's about uh, uh, I'm gonna play an old Korean guy who uh, runs a little store in South Central, and the IRS uh, made a mistake on the computer and came in playing he owes uh, fifty thousand dollars, and so he refused to pay and uh, he couldn't afford it because he was trying to save money for his wife to come over from Korea, and then so they put a lien on his on his. Uh, Bit of office, auction it off, and the guy in there. So he got pissed because he, he was in the Korean War and he fought on the side of the U.S. Right. And he was a bazooka expert. So he decided, well, I'm going to go underground and be like Rambo. And uh, it's an start, and start blowing up all the IRS buildings. Yeah. <laughs> they might probably come after me. You know? yeah, the practice is very good concept in and of itself. But, but anyway, uh, uh, I'm doing a comic book. Uh, they're doing it right now. I uh, paid the guy, and uh, so he's supposed to come up with the artwork because I'm going to the. Dallas Fantasy Fair April the 1st mm -hmm. and they're going to promote me over there and I'm going to introduce the Zuckerman. Yeah, man, it sounds like you got a full schedule. Yeah. Okay.